Even if this controller completely sucked rump, it would still be huge news for the controller world. In case you're wondering why I'm a little sweaty and disheveled, I just got done watching Cops. Why are you so sweaty? I was watching cops. In all seriousness, I just jumped off the elliptical because it's my 34th birthday today. I'm feeling a little bit old, so I thought if I hop on the, the lippy back there and burn about a thousand calories, maybe I'd feel youthful again. Not the case. I'm winded and I feel battered and battered and bruised. Give me a second to go from ashy to classy, scrappy to flashy. Absolutely insane. Here. Now, thus far, the Nintendo Switch is the only platform that's been getting any love in the Magnetic Hall Effect Thumbstick Department, which are virtually stick drift proof. You can develop stick drift by basically forcing it to break the spring, but that's the only component that really could get stick drift because there's no physical connection like a potentiometer sensor and carbon contact patch like you have with typical potentiometer thumbstick modules that we've been seeing in controllers for about three and a half decades. Hopefully, I quickly just summarize or debunk the whole, hey, you can still get stick drift on Magnetic Hall Effect sticks chill out there bud i see you whipping around down there in the comment section just just pipe down but this is a huge deal this is the first controller for xbox to sport this technology this is a wired controller it's not going to cost you a fortune and it does have a lot of those pro controller features that we love to see like two programmable rear buttons that are actually comfortable and can be reprogrammed on the fly quickly and efficiently you get a free month of game pass i'm pretty sure you can get that without buying a controller at any time i think microsoft's trying to get you hooked on their their drug of choice to get you in the door like that local friendly crack dealer and then before you know it you're paying for the rocks and you're paying for the games on game pass now since this controller is virtually identical component by component part by part to the controller that i reviewed a few months back titled the g7 i'm gonna take a top-down approach on this review Actually, I'm gonna hit it from the side. Put the marinara sauce on the side. Now, I have been playing with this controller for the last two and a half months, but I have been keeping it somewhat hush-hush because GameSir didn't really bleh, want this controller talked about just quite yet. But then once they gave me the go-ahead, I made that little social media post. If you're not following me on Twitter and Insta Slam and Snap Crap, and I, actually, I don't even think I have a Snapchat, but all the other ones, they're down there in the description below. I'm a little social butterfly. I try and spread my wings and spread my... Well, I, all I'm spreading is my wings for you, sweetheart. Bless you pay. <laughs> there's also magnetic hall effect triggers which isn't nearly as much as a selling factor as the thumbsticks because there's never any complaints about oh i'm getting trigger drift triggers do break trigger drift tokyo drift yeah, that's not a thing. But one major back step here, they kind of slipped on a banana peel, is that GameSir removed those slick, sick, sensual mechanical face buttons that were in the G7 and installed typical membrane buttons, which just, por que why? Working on the Rosetta Stone, Spanish. Cornelius fudge, that sucks. But other than that, this is a pretty sick controller, especially for the price if you don't mind going wired and you are on the Xbox or PC platforms. Let's get into the review. I guess that was pretty much it right there because this is the G7 that I've already reviewed and magnetic effect thumbsticks and a new colorway it has anti-friction rings that are teal or kind of an aqua foam looks really slick let's look at this thing a little closer this is your controller captain we've reached 6900 feet go ahead and start flicking the sticks and molly whop in the back paddles mm, you don't like back paddles how about those rear buttons we've tested almost 100 custom and premium controllers and we're only at the beginning you need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller check out the controller playlist bing bong controller captain out quick disclaimer for my audience, the Stallions and Stallionettes, this controller was sent for early review. However, this is going to be an honest review. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about it. So if there's any con shortcomings or areas of improvement, for example, them removing the mechanical face buttons and going the membrane route, you're going to hear about it. So these companies make better products over time. That's so the packaging included accessories on GameSir's latest beast. It is going to be identical packaging to the previous G7. Little perforated holes stamped in the top that say GameSir, a yes sir. Pull on this tab box inside of a box box inception little perforated pull tab okay this is different than the previous g7 that is satisfying your documentation inside of that baggie and a very nice 10 foot braided white usb a to c cable with a velcro tie back that stays connected also branded with game serve no dust covers but i'm not going to hold that against it overall a very nice flexible lightweight cable me likey also a little rubberized pad in there love to see that in a budget controller that's just Lovely. In your documentation bag, you are going to have multiple items, including a sticker, your Game Pass Ultimate subscription. I'm going to scratch that off. I don't need it. A little scratch and sniff. They don't smell like anything other than chemicals. A little instruction manual pamphlet or brochure, and sure, it'll tell you what to do with the controller. Not too bad. Opens up like one of the maps that Nathan Drake has used in a previous Uncharted title. Tons of languages. English is going to be right 
here. If you prefer a digital instruction manual, scan that QR code. You can get the PDF document on your phone if you want to pinch and zoom. Also, I believe those pictures are color, not black and white. I'm gonna show you how to rebind the rear buttons and some of the doodads and doohickeys of this controller so you don't really need this. I just busted out the original G7, which I've reviewed on the channel, this hand over here. But two features that were removed from the new SE that were on the original G7 that I just I wish transferred over is gonna be the mechanical face buttons. Talked about that during the intro, because that, that's a big one. These have an actual tap life cycle, so they will guarantee to last longer than membrane switches. Also faster to actuate, a little more satisfying as well. But then also you have these nice rubberized grips on the back, feel good in the hand. And then you have some cheap plastic over here. So those two things, cheap plastic on the rear shell and then membrane switches actually make the whole controller feel a little bit cheaper in the hand. You've got plastic instead of rubber and you don't have those nice McClickies anymore. You've got the best sound effect I can do for membrane switches. <sighs> As for some of the additional features or functions of this controller, if you hold down the M or mode button in conjunction with the D-pad, you're gonna have control of that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Up and down is indicated is gonna be your volume, up and down, and then left and right is gonna be your chat game blend, how loud your friends are yelling obscenities in Discord or, well, is there Discord on Xbox? I don't think so. Xbox chat. And then your game sound, you slapping the noobs back to the lobby. Now, as for using these rear buttons, you do need to have them turned on with these little toggles or sliders once the controller is plugged in and powered from your PC or your console, what you're gonna do is hold down the M button in conjunction with one of the rear buttons. This status light is gonna flash slowly, start pulsating, and then you're gonna press whatever face button, D-pad. That's the remappable buttons, right where my index finger is. People always ask me, what, what are the limitations? What can you not bind to the rear buttons? But then once you've pressed that face button, D-pad, whatever you want bound, it will exit remapping mode. Then to enter remapping mode for the other button, you're gonna do the same thing. Now, if you wanna cancel out those bindings and deactivate activate the buttons. Once you hold down mode and the back button that you want and it starts flashing, instead of pressing a face button or something you want bound, just press that back button again and it'll cancel it out for you. That's what the instruction manual says to do, but you have a damn toggle to completely disable or lock these out. So bleh, just do that. As for the rear buttons themselves, I am a big fan, not just the fact that you can remap them on the fly, but the fact that they are incredibly ergonomically comfortable. However, I do have one major complaint and that is the fact that this button is completely stuck in. It is broken, defective right out of the box. What I could do is a little tear down or disassembly. There's no exposed screws, but I'm assuming if I pop off these side panels, there'd be some Phillips head screws in there and I can unwedge that button that's stuck to the high heavens, but the average customer is not going to want to do that. And I do feel like these G7 SEs not only feel a little bit cheaper, but also just seemed like maybe they were a little more rushed in production because I had no issues with my G7 wired for the Xbox, the one I reviewed previously. So that's just, that's, that's stinky. I genuinely have been having not the best, what that <laughs> battery just died on my ring light. I've really been having not the best luck here recently with electronic consumer items between my first ROG ally coming out of the box with stick drift on the left stick. It's probably because I was talking all that good shit all the time about, oh, I never get stick drift. Look at me, blah, blah, blah. But uh, you know, it could happen to anybody at any time. I'm not immune from it. And uh, we've seen that here recently. I'm getting slapped around silly with it. And that's what really makes this controller sick. The SE is the fact that you've got magnetic Hall Effect niblets, which shouldn't do that for you. So while other things on the controller might break or even come broken out of the box, like that damn rear button that's jammed in, which is unexcusable in my opinion, you will not get stick drift, at least not for the longevity of you having that controller. Something else will fail prior to you getting stick drift is my point. Now, if we could start seeing this technology implemented in more high-end premium wireless controllers for PlayStation 5, Xbox series, all the platforms, that's awesome. And this controller is a step in that direction because it is the first non-switch controller, even though it is wired, even though it is an entry-level premium controller, it's still what we're looking for. Over here in Gamepad Tester, we're going to notice some very tight dead zones right out of the box at 0.0002. Very nice. As I move the left and right analog stick to and fro, and then I stop, they snap back to that default value. So zero out of the box stick drift, what you'd expect from these magnetic Hall Effect thumbsticks. Let's test the circularity to get our thumbstick accuracy, which I do declare will be very low, probably under 1% if I were to be a betting woman. And uh, indeed. Slight like golf, lower number better here, and we are, this is a birdie. Actually, better yet, it's an eagle. Better than par for the course. A lot of golf lingo there for some reason. These are some beastly thumbsticks. Now with this controller, the manufacturer has advertised a 265 hertz refresh rate, which is a very interesting or awkward number. Generally, they go in increments of, well, it jumps from 125 to 250 to 500 to 1000. 275 is an awkward number, but we're going to test it right now. Inside of X input test, we're going to get our refresh rate slash polling rate, which is going to give us our out of the box input lag or delay. Okay, so this is in the 250 hertz realm, which is not surprising whatsoever. It's giving us an out of the box just under four milliseconds 
milliseconds of input lag or delay, about a 3.8, also very consistent with the minimum and maximum right next to each other, shoulder to shoulder. They're good friends. And jitter, quite minimal as well. Great results here. Is this controller susceptible to being overclocked? Because one interesting note, the manufacturer GameSir said a future update with the GameSir Nexus application is going to push that polling rate to 1000 hertz, which will get it under one millisecond of input lag or delay. Can we just skip over that update from the manufacturer and do it now with our overclocking software? Over here in the Lord of Mice overclocking software, if you select this drop down, make this all and you will see your Xbox gaming device as it is an Xbox controller. X input compatible. You love to see that. Not overclocked on a stock clock for an estimated four milliseconds of input lag or delay. Let's overclock this beast. And after all that son of a gun having good fun in the sun, what we're going to do is unplug the controller, replug it in because it is a, a wired controller. Got to get used to it for goodness sake. And now it is overclocked at 1000 hertz for an estimated one millisecond of input lag or delay. Let's test the theory. You know, let's pop it on the dyno and get the horsepower and torque on her. My car guys are like, yep, hell yeah, brother. Oh, she's not even recognized now. Oh boy. Uh oh. Mm, let's taper her back to 500 hertz. A thousand is a little bit too much. The knees start knocking and the hips start shaking. Um, it's too much for this controller. Interesting. So at 500 hertz, the controller is still recognized by the Windows 11 PC and is still usable in game and also in my tools, my controller programs like X input test. <laughs> But when you crank her to a thousand, when you twist that knob to 11, so to speak, it, it, the controller pretty much becomes unusable. It's not recognized by Steam or any other launchers, and it just sits there with the status light flashing. So do not overclock to 1000 hertz. The controller simply doesn't like it. Now, this is interesting because GameSir is claiming that a thousand hertz refresh rate is going to be available from the manufacturer in the near future. But thus far, you can't force a thousand hertz clock with the Lord of Mice overclocking software that us nitty gritty controller players have been using since the Dark Age. So as of now, no, this controller is not susceptible to being overclocked and you're going to be getting about 3.8 milliseconds on a stock clock, which is really solid. So to summarize, to bring everything all together, this is a $45 controller with magnetic hall effect thumbsticks that should in essence never give you stick drift, at least not before something else breaks or unfortunately comes broken. But if that does happen, you have a 12 month, one year warranty. Unfortunately, I do feel like a couple of features were missed with this controller. I do really wish were transferred over from the standard wire G7, such as the mechanical face buttons and those rubberized grips. But overall, I would deem this an upgrade just because of those thumbsticks. I'm going to have a video coming out in the very near future, a deep dive into what exactly magnetic Hall effect thumbstick modules are. We're actually going to take apart those thumbstick modules as well as potentiometer modules, as well as do some testing and gamepad tester. And then I'll kind of just summarize all the knowledge that I've gathered of my years of being a controller guy, person, guru, thing, controllers, gamepads, doodads, and my clickies. <laughs> This is linked in the description below, and I'll see you stallions and stallionettes in tomorrow's video because I'm trying to get back into like a daily upload schedule. That'd be sick. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach and assist them as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes most of the time. Peace.